So we hear the ID Tech X show, and who are you? I'm Roddy Urquhart. I'm uh, Managing Director of Flick UK. Uh, we're a subsidiary of Flick from Silicon Valley. So what is Flick? Okay, and it's um, spelled like uh, with a C and a K and a Q. Yeah. The, our founder is a keen cricketer, and he originally had the idea of um, putting monitoring into sports equipment, but he rapidly concluded that um, industrial IoT would be a more interesting area to concentrate on. So we focus on industrial IoT, specifically condition monitoring in different industries. So where are you in these pictures? Okay, um, we can be in different areas. The three main things we focus on are smart wireless sensors with edge intelligence, also algorithms and analytics. So we can be involved in monitoring um, things like vibration, acoustics, current. So our sensors can be, mar um, be used to monitor assets, with generally large mechanical assets. Our wireless sensors are um, operate off batteries. Is that what it looks like? That's that's how one of our models looks like. Yes. You have them working now. Yes. I've got a, I've got a, a demo version here. This is a vibration sensor. So what do you have in this box? Um, there are there are some MEMS based sensors which are used for undertaking the measurements. There's a micro powerful microcontroller, memory, and firmware on the system, and there is in this case a Wi-Fi link. Uh, so you could do Wi-Fi or LoRa, or what would you do? Um, we try to be agnostic as far as wireless interfaces are concerned. Um, we, we, we offer today uh, Wi-Fi, LoRa, and we will shortly offer narrowband IoT. And that's using the 5G, or it could in eventually um, use 5G? Um, we, there's nothing to stop 5G being used in the future. At the moment, what we're, we're do, focused on is 4G cellular, um, Wi-Fi, LoRa One. So is this a, a right kind of product for this kind of market? Uh, they like having this kind of, because it's uh, uh, it going to go in any weather, uh, it's, yes. it's going to work for a long the, time? Or? The, the enclosures have to work um, and be protected against moisture and against dust. So in this, for example, um, this is a, a monitor being installed on a wastewater pump. And it's been used to get insights into the health of the pump. This can allow you to detect when perhaps a potential failure is about to happen, or alternatively, you can use it to introduce condition-based maintenance plans. Uh, does it have a battery inside, or where does it get a power? Um, the, these are battery-operated, yes. So inside this box, there's like a battery. This is a demo model, and there isn't a battery it. It could in be it. a battery in there, and it could, could last be a battery. for how long? It depends on the settings you have. Um, the battery life will depend on a number of things like the duty cycle, the sampling rates you're using, but generally speaking our clients are wanting things to run for years rather than days. So like five years maybe, or ten years? It'll, it'll, depend, ten. It, it'll depend on the setting. I think, I think um, since some of the um, applications we have have a fairly high sampling rate for things like vibration or acoustics, it'd be more likely to be two two years, but if you're doing environmental monitoring, you could have a much lower sampling rate and your batteries could last a lot longer. So 10 if, years is possible. If we install it like on a huge ship or on a, on a crane or on a bridge or something, you might want to have solar, no? So you don't have to go and change the batteries? There, there are a number of possibilities. Clear, clearly, if you've got a constant source of power, like a solar panel or, or even if you have access to mains power, there's no reason why you shouldn't use these other sources. So, uh, uh, what's the latest, uh, what are you showing here? Is this uh, part of your solution? That is, sh that is showing... Yeah, we'll that, to the mic, yeah. That is showing vibration monitoring. So this is part of your solution where people have like a back yes. end or...? Yes, we, we transmit data to the cloud. So we have um, back end analysis and we also have visualization for, for our clients, which is customizable. Uh, and it's, so it's uh, industrial IoT solutions. Uh, where are you based, and, uh, and uh, what's the status of the okay. company? The, the, the company is based in Silicon Valley in San Jose. Um, we have two subsidiary operations. One is in Western Australia, and we're based in Aberdeen in Scotland, covering the Europe Middle East market.
Uh, are you a startup or are you already yes, we're startup? We're, we're startup. We started in 2015. We opened our office in Australia two years ago and we opened our office in Scotland in December. Are you shipping these? Is it? We, we have clients, so, so we, have, we have a number of projects running in different industries. The industries include, um, I've, I've mentioned waste water pump monitoring, we've had cases monitoring transport systems including um, ground power units at airports and also we've had um, monitoring in the maritime environment, monitoring the impacts of ships when they're docking and also providing data analysis to shipyards. All right, and uh, what's next? What's next? Well, we're, we're anticipating further use cases. We've got some interest in the electrical utility market, uh, monitoring distribution networks, um, but basically any um, mechanical or electrical resource um, in industry is potentially going to make gains from understanding the condition and introducing appropriate maintenance. Uh, this is definitely the future of the industrial IoT, right? But uh, yes. what makes you different from the other solutions maybe okay. out there? For, for the last 10 years, most people talking about IoT have been talking about um, having relatively simple computations on the sensor node and transmitting a lot of data to the cloud. Now, in the industrial context, if you're wanting to use a narrowband network such as LoRaWAN or narrowband IoT, um, you can't transmit vast amounts of data, which might be generated by monitoring vibrations, for example, because you just don't have a big enough data pipe. So what we've done is, what differentiates us is, we've put um, intelligence on the sensor nodes themselves. So we have a powerful microcontroller and firmware to process the raw data. Then this means that we can send um, more meaningful information at a high level over a communications link. Things like data features, alarms, and alerts. And this means we need to transmit far less data than traditional IoT solutions. So you have a, it's not just compression, it's, it's like you have a... It's extracting features from the data. You have kind of AI on the edge or something. We have, we have, um, we process the data and extract features from it, yes. And then we have the higher, the, the more complex algorithms, of course, run in the cloud. All right. So uh, looking forward to a more efficient world, right? Hopefully. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's our goal. With, with mechanical assets being better looked after and better utilized.